the icons of real estate podcast. Are you ready to learn the proven money-making secrets from top producing icon agents? Ready to skyrocket your business? This podcast is for you. Tune in every week with your host, Tomasz Fonseca, and find out how to implement proven strategies to 10 times your business. From $3 million to $30 million in just 12 months. Brought to you by the Masters in Real Estate Marketing, Arter SEO. Welcome to the Icons of Real Estate podcast. I'm your host, Patty Teal. Let me tell you about today's guest. You're really going to be interested in this. His name is Daniel Phelps. He's the founder and CEO of Cura Home. In 2016, Daniel started Cura Home in his garage. Since then, it has grown to two states and 22 employees, and he's starting a franchise focusing on high-quality work at a fair price. Cura Home services homes on a quarterly basis, completing their maintenance needs. Welcome, Daniel. Thank you, Patty. Appreciate you inviting me on. Oh, I'm so excited to talk to you. You'll find out I know very little about home maintenance. So uh, businesses like yours are, are like gold. <laughs> yeah, that's okay. A lot of people don't know what they don't know about home maintenance, and, and that's why we have a business. Oh, yes. That's why you have a business for people like me. That's for sure. So uh, could you start with telling me about the journey to get this business going all the way to where you are today and what interested you in the first place about starting this type of business? Yeah, I think to tell my entire story, I have to go all the way back to childhood. I, I did fine. grow up. Yeah, I, I did grow up in an entrepreneurship family. My um, parents raised and sell golden retriever puppies, and um, I think they sold a puppy to every state. They're they're very well known in the community, especially here in Minnesota. And so saw that that really gave me a lot of confidence. Um, you know, I would start out. You know, through my childhood, I would train horses for people. And through 4-H, I was kind of kind of nerd that way. But um, went into college, I always wanted to invent something, um, but I always feel like everything's already been invented. But um, when the opportunity came up to start Cura Home, I had worked for an agriculture company and, and created a ton of SOPs for them. They produce about 6 million chicken eggs a day. And then I, wow. yeah, it was really cool to see that process. And then I worked for my brother's company. He also is in the home um, service industry, but does a different service. He cleans windows and installs holiday lights. So between those two items, when the concept came up for Cura Home, we were working for a lot of high-end uh, homeowners and a lot of people just, they weren't able to take care of a lot of things. And they were always like, you get in a conversation with them while we were cleaning their windows or installing holiday lights. And there was just a lot of frustrations for people that things weren't being done correctly at their homes. So when the idea for Cura Home came up, I, I, I jumped at the opportunity knowing that I always it was the right time in my life. I was 26. I, I wasn't married yet. I was renting out the base of my home. I had a little side gig going on where I was training and boarding dogs. That was really quite passive. And uh, it was really the right opportunity. So I decided to start Cure Home in 2016 on my garage. Oh boy, that's great. It sounds like you're an entrepreneur at heart and you were watching for opportunities. And I've got to not get distracted because I'm such a dog lover. I'm babysitting for my golden <laughs> retriever grand dog right now. So let's Yes. I'm going to have to remind myself to stay focused here. <laughs> <laughs> they are so, great. Yes, they're wonderful. So could you tell me, uh, I know you have home maintenance that gets on a routine. It's on a quarterly mm -hmm. basis, I think, a schedule. So when you go into people's homes, uh, or maybe you also do businesses, I'm not sure you can let me know about that, but what do you look for and what do you check and what do you fix? Yeah, we come into the home and we maintain up, upwards of 32 different items in the home. And some are really, really important. And some fall down more on the homeowner's preference. We do a majority of work for homeowners, mostly because we have found that the people that own homes care about them a lot more than uh, typically people who are renting or own real estate. And there's not as many items that need to be maintained in your typical uh, it's like small commercial building, for example. So okay. majority of our, yeah, a lot of our work is uh, residential. And what we do... Our entire process is we'll come into your home and we send in a, a, a salesperson to walk through your entire home with you. And it, it's it's really um, simple because we just walk through and we show you, hey, Patty, and if I lived in your home, here's everything that I would maintain. And then we have an all the card option. It looks like a report card that you would receive in elementary school where you can check all the subjects or all the items that you want us to maintain. And then there's a column for each quarter. And then on pages two through six, we actually take a photo of everything that we did for you as well at your home. So 
Sorry, in the kitchen, there's a ton of stuff. Cleaning your refrigerator coils will provide and change that filter for you. Clean the range hood. We um, clean and seal your granite countertops for you. Clean the garbage disposal. Wash machines have filters. Wash machines need to be clean. The stainless steel, um, we will polish that for you too and, and make that look really, really nice. And that's that's just in the kitchen. Uh, utility room, we spend a ton of time with, as you can imagine. That's kind of, we think of the utility room as almost like the heart of the home where that's that's pumping all the air through everything and it's it's making it clean and things like that. It works very similar to the way that your heart does. And so providing and changing all those filters, draining water heater sediment, cleaning air exchangers, they're very neglected. There's, there's a ton of stuff that needs to be done, but our really common services that people are almost always selecting are like cleaning your dryer vent, cleaning bathroom fans, cleaning AC units, cleaning refrigerator coils. Those items that if neglected, it's causing the machine to work a lot harder, which it, it increases your utility bill, but also decreases the life of that appliance. Wow, that's a lot. And it's all the things that we uh, put by the wayside because you're not staring at your refrigerator coils, so right. you forget about them. So things yes. like that are very important though. And I know uh, I read on your website that you also do air duct cleaning. And um, does that help with allergies? And how often should that be done? Yeah, we recommend doing it about every three to four years, just depending on your home. Patty, you mentioned you have a golden retriever at your home right now. So every home is a little bit different. The ecosystem of that home is different. So for a home that might have uh, three, four kids running around and maybe a dog or two, and there's dust and dirt and everything going, you might need your air ducts cleaned every one or two years. A lot of times when people are calling us for um, air duct cleaning, they're talking about something new, like a new home, a new baby, a new furnace, a new construction project or it's been three to four years since they've had their air ducts cleaned. And they're noticing that there's dust piling up on their like, nightstand or things like that. And that's a really good time. And to your answer your question about allergies, I have to say it really depends. For, for someone that's really sensitive, removing all that dust and debris and, and pet, pet standard, all that stuff from the air ducts is getting it out of the system and out of your home. And so that is going to reduce the amount of, of dust and debris that's circulating through the air. So it's really depends. We've had people that say they moved into a new home and they lived there for several years. And once we clean the air ducts, they slept through the house. They slept through the night for the first time after we clean the air ducts. Oh, yeah, okay. so we've had really extreme immediate results. And we've mm -hmm. had other people that we come and we show them like a before photo. And, we, and it's like, hey, there's not a ton of debris in this. You know, we do you still want to clean your air ducts? And they say yes. And then you're not going to have this extreme um, before and after results as, you know, the next house that maybe hasn't been cleaned in 20, 30, 40 years or, you know, uh, things like that. Right. And do you do air conditioning maintenance as well? What we do for the air conditioner is that we, we will clean it, um, but we don't, we won't, don't, we don't do a tune up. Like we're not HVAC certified. So we're not adding Freon or doing a tune up for that. We like to think of our business kind of split into two. It's that one-time service of air duct cleaning. And then it's the routine maintenance package where you can select up to those 32 services. And it's it's almost like a janitor coming to your home where I think of like, if your father-in-law was going to come into town for the weekend and he got there a day early and you were like, hey, I didn't take the day off of work. So you need to spend a day doing stuff. It's everything that he would do. So he wouldn't do a tune-up on your AC unit, but you'd probably take a hose and he would clean it out oh, really nice for you. Nice, very nice. Um, and so I wanted to ask you what states you're in right now. Yeah, right now we are servicing Minneapolis and Denver. We had opened in a few other states that, and we had, they were uh, corporate owned, we, we own those locations, but ultimately we found it extremely challenging to manage technicians when you're a thousand, 1500 miles away and providing a high quality service is extremely important to us, Patty. And so ultimately we decided that in order to maintain a very high quality service, we, we closed down a few of those locations, but very, very happy with the way that our Denver and Minneapolis locations are running. And, and through all those, the challenges that come with running a, a service business, we decided to, um, with people contacting us almost monthly, asking us to teach them how to run a routine maintenance company, we decided to switch to the franchise model in order to expand our business. Well, that's so cool. I really want to hear about that. Um, so people can buy a franchise from you and could they do it anywhere in the United States? Are you limiting it to certain states? Yeah, um, right now. So we have, um, I've learned a ton through the going through becoming a franchise or there's, there's states that you can, um, once you file your, your federal disclosure document or your FDD, your franchise disclosure document, excuse me, once you do that, you can sell it to a certain number of states, but then there's about 13 more that you need to be registered in. And I believe at this time we have become registered in like 48 of the 50 states. So, um, so if you inquire, 
Yeah, thank you. If you inquire with mm -hmm. us, we would work with you to ensure. But um, so far, all inquiries that we have received, we're able to um, continue going through that that process. So it's um, very interesting. It's a very regulated um, process to make sure that both us as the franchisor are protected, but also the franchisee. You know, you're buying a your life change for sure. You know, it's going to be a full time new job for you, and there aren't guarantees. And so, just making sure that both parties are um, getting what they um, are expected out of it is um, it's it's very regulated, but I think it's it's good. I think it's it's healthy for both parties. Right, and so if somebody were to purchase a franchise, um, do you have a guidebook for them that tells them how they do everything, so that a business owner can just come in and figure everything out with all the work that you've done? Yeah, so. From my background of creating the those standard operating procedures for that agriculture company that had six million eggs going through their facility a day, I when I first started Cura Home, I kind of in the very beginning, even though I hope that um, I know I won't personally see it, but I hope Cura Home celebrates a hundred years at, at one point, and maybe that's my kids, or my grandkids, or we've sold. I don't know. Yeah. Yes. But I do know that in seeing successful businesses that are have celebrated decades of, of time, they have a lot of systems and processes in place to ensure that quality. And so in the very beginning, I started creating systems and processes and documenting them. And, and from that, we have about a 600 page manual that tells you literally everything how to do it. Like every question that has ever been asked over the phone, we have that documented in the way that we want that, that question asked. And like, for example, uh, cleaning and sharpening the garbage disposal, even in that, we tell you how to do all that, but then there's also even like talking points for not only our technicians, but the franchisee. And it's as nerdy as it sounds, I think it's interesting that the garbage disposal was invented in Racine, Wisconsin in 1927. <laughs> and, and that's a talking point for, so, mm -hmm. so not only will we provide a ton of uh, adequate on the job and in-person training for a new franchisee, but they also get access to that 600 page manual with all of the content and resources and all these things that we've figured out over time that they don't have to ask that question because it's already been answered for them. Yes. So in addition to running your own Cure Home businesses, I imagine a goal of yours is to get those franchises sold. Yeah, for sure. That's a big thing that we're focusing on this year. We have an individual on the west side of Florida that's um, about 99% of the way through that process. Uh, for me, my personality, I'm not very patient. And so by, you know, if, if you call us for routine maintenance, I could have you signed up today or tomorrow. But the franchise is like a seven, eight, nine month process of of getting through it. And so I'm uh, going through a life lesson of patience as we as we get this going. But it's it's very fun because I love the challenge. But um, yeah, it's a big goal. One thing that the main two things I for me personally that I'm really focusing on at this time is continue to build our routine maintenance. We're pulling on about five to eight new routine maintenance clients a week, plus servicing all of our quarterly clients. So it's a it's just kind of a snowball going down the mountain and then also selling franchises. Right. Now how do you reach out to your customers? Let's start with the franchises. How do they find out about you? Yeah, so we're hearing all kinds of things. People here about us on a podcast. They were searching something and they read about us. And then also they thought it was interesting. They started following us on social media. So we have a, a decent uh, social media following about like 12,000 on Instagram. It's, it's, not a, it's not a complete home run, but we're, we're growing there. And so people are searching and, and learning about this. And I think... Um, people are very interested in the root, the subscription-based model of the home maintenance. Uh, but um, one individual heard about us because his sister-in-law has is a customer here in Minneapolis, and she heard that we were franchising, and she told him um, in another state. So it's it's all different ways. It's a lot of word of mouth. We are working with brokers that are strictly on on commission, but that has not been a slam dunk for us. So it is a very um, a, a huge challenge to get that out and going. I don't think it's. I think anyone who sold. Um, one or multiple franchisees is um, they're they're definitely have worked very hard to do that. So it sounds like getting the word out more to brokers would be a good thing for you. Or are you just saying it's just not as effective as going out to the general public? Well, I think so. We haven't. So we get like the way that the franchise system works is a, a broker will contact us and they'll do a territory check. So they'll say, "Hey, is Indianapolis available?" And and at this time it is. So we respond, "Yes, it is." And I said, we have someone who is interested in that. So that individual is looking at, you know, they're shopping, they want to buy a, a franchise. So they're looking at, you know, dozens of models. And so for the broker, you know, this person, depending on their personality, maybe we're competing with 
subway and this person wants to buy three, four, five, six, seven subways. And, and so depending on the personality of the individual, it really needs to be like a perfect fit because eventually, you know, you are going to be dating and then get married here because we're, we're working together, right? We're going to tell you how to do everything and you're operating underneath that Cure Home brand. Right. And what about real estate brokers and agents? Do they refer to you? Um, yes and no. We have found that working with real estate agents, if we are able to stay in front of them on a regular basis, it works mm -hmm. quite well. And the way that we do that is a lot of times we'll do a trade of service. And so we'll say, hey, we'll come in and we'll maintain your home for you on a quarterly basis. And in response, and in return, we just ask that you post about us each time we come to your social media. And a lot of real estate agents have a, have a uh, respectable following on social media. And that has helped us so that when they come across the issue of, um, you know, whatever it may be, or if there's something holding a homeowner back, maybe they're intimidated by the amount of maintenance that's needed in a, when you move from like an apartment to a home, they have uh, a resource to, to give to that new homeowner. Wow, that's very, very interesting. So I think that when realtors sell a house, maybe they could give a gift of your home maintenance. I think that would be a very nice thing to give the person that just uh, bought the house. Yeah, most definitely. A lot of new homeowners, they also, their areas clean. So we, we give the realtors a lot of different options on, you know, a size of, you know, you can give a, a one-time cleaning, you can give a hundred dollar gift, $500 gift. We have all kinds of options for realtors to be able to give as a, as a nice gift. You've thought of everything. You, I can tell that you're a good marketer. <laughs> I, not quite. I, Patty, I'm Patty. I'm still learning. I, the day I say I know I've thought of everything, I think I, that'd be a bad day. So we're, yeah. I love having conversations with people like you that are thinking creatively and outside the box of, you know, hey, how can you organically grow your business? And yeah, realtors, uh, real estate brokers are just awesome referral partners for us. Oh, that's great. And what is the cost to purchase a franchise? Yeah, so there's the, the your total cost is going to be between sixty and one hundred twenty five thousand dollars, and to break that down a little bit, you pay us forty five thousand dollars for the rights to operate cure a home in a certain territory that we award you, and then additionally on top of that, you need to buy a vehicle, and you can franchise, you can excuse me, uh, finance that, and then or you can pay for it with cash. That's why there's a ride range. And then additionally, you need to buy about $7,000 worth of equipment. And from that, once you have that, after you come up here and spend two weeks training with us, you'll be ready to service your first client's home with that uh, sixty dollars to $125,000. But I'm, I'm estimating for the average person, you come up here, stay in a short-term rental or a hotel for two weeks training, you buy all that stuff, it's going to be really close to sixty-five dollars or $70,000. Right. Well, still, it's very reasonable compared to other franchises, isn't it? Yes, most definitely. And um, and then on top of that, after that, it's, it's a 7% royalty and a 2% marketing fee. So we're posting to your social media for you every day. We're Ooh. writing blogs, creating YouTube videos. Um, we're doing all that stuff. We're even, uh, as, as funny as it sounds, posting things on TikTok and things like that. So we're um, oh, very that creatively. Great. Yeah. yeah. So we're out there for you so that you can work on building your business and not having to think, well, how do I, maybe I'm not as comfortable in front of a camera or things like that. We're doing those things for you. I could have been featured on some funny videos. I remember trying to put my dryer in its place by myself and I got this yeah. shock and I was like, oh my gosh, these, <laughs> these need experts, these types of things. And also, you know, it's a danger. And, and I think your first priority I read is safety. Like when you, the dryer gets clogged up, that could cause a fire. Yeah, for sure. And that's, so there's a ton of things that, that your typical homeowner just isn't aware of. A lot of people that we take care of their homes for them, they're, they're very busy. They don't want to be an expert at installing a dryer or cleaning a dryer or things like that. And, and we come out and we just take care of that for you. And, and a lot of people nowadays, they didn't grow up necessarily in the home watching their parents. They grew up maybe in a daycare and then going oh, to school. And so that's they're, an interesting observation, right? For sure. So yeah, and, and homes are also becoming more complex. So all these things are coming together for really, it was kind of the perfect little storm to start a routine maintenance company um, in, when we did, and, and it's growing quite quickly. And I think our biggest downfall, the, the one negative to our company is that the, the amount of people that Google or search for a routine home maintenance company is very low because there's not a ton of competition. So we want competition, but they're not, they're not out there quite yet. There's a few companies across the state doing what, or across the country doing what they're doing, but it's, it's very minimal compared to like a, a carpet cleaning or HVAC. You know, there's thousands of those companies in each state. Well, I must say, Ardor, you know, the company that I work with that sponsors this podcast and produces it, that's their specialty. So yes. they do amazing things with SEO. So I just had to throw that out there. 
Now, what makes you uh, have that drive to not just be satisfied with the business, but wanting to expand it and make it bigger? Why do you have that in your heart? You know, that's a really good question. Uh, my parents have often asked me like, hey, what's your why? And things like that. And I, I think for, for me, I get bored quite easily. I, I love creating systems and processes, but I, this year, one of my goals, I, I, you know, January 1st, everyone creates their goals, right? Right. And I just said, I'm just, I'm going to have one goal. I want to listen to an audio book a week. And I'm so going to, mm-hmm. I'm going to consume 52 books this year, one way or another and, and real books, not, not a book I'm reading to my uh, two-year-old son, but, um, and, and with that, I think one of the biggest things that I, that I use is I really want, like, if, if I still, we send out a Christmas card, every few years when you have a big life event, like our son is born and, and we have another one due here shortly. But at the end of the year, if you were going to write down your stereotypical Christmas card, what is that going to say? You know, is it going to say, I had another great year going into the office for eight hours a day and, and uh, um, I got a 3% raise? Or is it going to say, we did this, this, and this? And then said, what's your Christmas card going to say? And at the end of it, what I, what I really then I expand that to when I'm laying there and hopefully my grandkids or great grandkids are, are asking me, Hey, you know, grandpa or, or dad, like, what are you most proud of? And I, what I really want to be able to say is that, Hey, I tried all these things and like these, this percentage failed, but man, it was fun doing this stuff. And so I think my analogy is I, I would rather try something and fail at it than say, you know what? I never had the guts to try that out. And, and that because of that, we've had some really fun successes and we've also had a few failures at Cura Home. But I think all that is part of, hey, like we're gonna go out here and we're gonna give it a shot. And for me, like when I get bored, it's, it's uh, my, sometimes my team at Cura Home gets a little nervous because we're gonna come up with some crazy idea, but um, I don't miss dinner with my family. I get home every night in time for dinner. That's really, really important to me, but I don't go home and watch TV for four hours. We're, we're out walking around, we live on a, small 10 acre hobby farm and my son and I and, and wife were um, in the garden and feeding the chickens and things like that. And Aww, yeah, I love yeah. quality time. But um, when he goes to bed and things like that, we don't, you know, I'm, I'm actually researching, you know, where's the next big opportunity we're um, getting into short-term rentals, you know, looking at this franchise stuff. So building that, maybe it's writing a blog or doing things like that. So always just using the best um, source of your time. I think a lot of us have more time on our hands than um, we realize. And, and if you don't believe me, just go on your phone and you can see the screen time that you spend each day on your phone. And, <laughs> and I think you'll see that you have a little more time than you, than you may realize. Yes. Well, I have to say, I think you're wise beyond your years. Yeah. <laughs> Thank <no>. you. <laughs> yeah. And I love that idea of what's your Christmas card going to say? Hmm. That's something to think about, isn't it? That's a good yes. way to set your goals. What do you want it to say? For you don't sure. want it to be whiny and have all the problems that you ran into. You want it to be positive. Yeah. And, and each year that I um, experience it, it, it just flies by, you know, time mm-hmm. goes faster and faster and faster. And, and all of a sudden, before we know it, it it's going to be December again. And, and I think be. that, mm-hmm. yeah, focusing on those yearly goals and then quarterly breaking that down into, you know, weekly, what am I going to do this week so I can achieve my, you know, month and quarterly and annual goals. And where do I want to be in five years? Because it, it does take, you know, an effort today to, to get some of those things put in place. Yeah. And, you know, I forgot to ask you the range of cost for that home maintenance that you do when people sign up for a year, a quarterly. And I imagine it has to depend a little bit on the size of the house and other things. Yeah, hundred percent. Because there's definitely outliers, right? We have, uh, we have clients that have four or five furnaces and they live in a, uh, oh, essentially mm-hmm. a state. But I will mm-hmm. tell you, our, our average client ends up being right around 350 per quarter, and that includes mm-hmm. all your materials and time. So we're providing, you know, Minnesota, we need softener salt and, and your refrigerator filter, furnace filters, the smoke alarm batteries, all those filters. Um, we have clients that are as low as, as $199 per visit, and then um, we, have, we have clients that are uh, near $1,000 per quarter because they have, you know, a lot of things, and they select every single option possible to have their home maintained. So um, the nice thing is that I believe that we can fit anyone who's wanting to hire a professional, even if you live in a very simplistic, like uh, town, townhomes, for example, are very simplistic when it comes to maintenance. Mm-hmm. We have a budget for almost anyone. We can come in like once a year for one ninety nine and take care of a few items for you. But it is all the cart and it, we just a price pops up as we select different items. Wow, that's very cool. So I want to make sure that people can get a hold of you. And I know you have uh, different categories of people you're reaching out to, both the customer and also people that might be interested in a franchise. How would they find out more? Yeah, the best way is to find us at our website, which is curahome.com. That's K-U-R-A, curahome.com. 
follow us on social media. We try really hard to educate people so that you're not, you're preventing breakdowns and helping your home uh, run more efficiently. We're really active there. If you want to connect with me personally, LinkedIn is the best way to do that. And, and you can just search Daniel Felt on LinkedIn. Well, Daniel, this was fascinating. Thank you so much for being our guest on Icons of Real Estate. I, I really appreciate it. Thank you, Patty. It was great to be here. Thank you. Thank you.